Welcome to a new vlog. This will be a review of a new test instrument I discovered and you may know from previous videos that I like electronic loads. I reviewed a bunch of these hobby grade electronic loads in the past. These were all sub $50 products and within that budget you do get some disadvantages like limited accuracy, limited power, limited reliability, limited connectivity or limited functionality. So you basically had to trade off some of these things to be able to get an affordable electronic load. This is the Konkin KP184 and I believe this will be a game changer for those who are looking to get something a bit more professional but are still limited by budget and they can't go for the better instruments starting at around 500 US dollars. The unit is delivered in a large box with nice padding protection and inside you get the instrument, a uh, user manual, a few accessories, uh, a BNC connector, some spade connectors, an RS-232 DB9 cable and some wiring. Let me take a second to remove this protection film from the display. The unit was provided by banggood.com for free for the purpose of this review and I will place a link to the product page in the description below the video and what's nice is that they have this in their EU stock it's actually cheaper than getting it from the Chinese warehouse and you get the benefit of fast delivery through local couriers and you don't have to pay any extra tax which is always nice. The instrument is built from folded sheet metal I quite like its uh, vertical form factor it means you can have have multiple of these units side by side. The front panel is plastic and overall it feels like it's a nice solid construction, nothing to complain here. There are a bunch of ventilation holes in the front so it's probably sucking in fresh air from the front, it passes that over some heat sinks inside and then this is the exhaust at the back. There is a mention in the user manual that the fan is PWM controlled so we shouldn't have any issues with a noisy fan. The color scheme and general user interface look and feel is very similar to other instruments coming from China uh, and my particular unit has a uh, date code of uh, February 2020 so it's left the factory fairly recent. Let's talk a bit about the specs of this unit. I have the KP184 model, which is like their better equipped model. It works with both 110 and 240 volts AC. The load voltage can be a DC voltage between 1 and 150 volts, up to 40 amps, up to 400 watts total. Measurement accuracy is 0.05% plus 5 counts for both current and voltage with 1 millivolt and 1 milliamp of resolution and we'll be verifying that accuracy later. There is RS-232 and RS-485 connectivity with a Modbus protocol which is specified in the user manual and there is a piece of software for the PC you have to obtain it from the manufacturer which doesn't respond to emails but I've managed to source it and I'm gonna put a link to this app in the description below the video and I'll try to connect it towards the end of this video. This load has four basic operating modes, constant current, constant voltage, constant power and constant resistance. There is also a battery discharge mode where you can set some termination voltage when the load will automatically stop. It can measure battery internal resistance and it will also do battery capacity calculations based on the measured data. There is remote sensing capability which strangely in my opinion is handled through this BNC connection at the front but they do include a uh, matching connector as an accessory in the box. On the back of the unit we have the IEC mains input which is fused the power switch, a voltage selector switch, the RS-232 interface and an I.O. connector, the RS-485 interface, external trigger, pass-fail output as well as some uh, I.O.s which I don't think are used in this version of the dummy load. Now having the power switch on the back is not ideal and it just feels like there might be enough space on the front panel right here to the right of the negative terminal but we'll have to see that uh, in the third down uh, maybe there is enough room so we can uh, hack this thing and move the power switch to the front of the unit. 
The manual also talks about a 10 kHz dynamic testing function where you set two different levels of current in a period and then the load will rapidly oscillate between those two to simulate an unstable load. This is fairly typical uh, testing mode of electronic loads. There is also an overcurrent test function where you set a starting current, the stepping current amount and stepping time then the procedure cycles through the different uh, steps until an overcurrent protection is triggered on your source device. This can be useful for power supply current limit testing. Multiple KP184s can be connected via RS-485 interface. One can be the master while the other ones are slaves. And once you do a configuration on the master, it will automatically apply the same settings to the slaves. That's a nice function for production laboratory type testing where you need to parallel a bunch of these to increase your testing capacity. Now getting back to the front of the unit you can start to notice where some cost savings were made. We have a seven segment display interface so that limits the amount of information you can show and the menu system doesn't feel very intuitive. It does have a logic but it takes a bit of practice and study of the user manual to learn how to navigate it. On the plus side the display has a high refresh rate it's really cool how fast it updates the measurement and this flickering it's only due to the uh, camera uh, picking up the refresh rate of the display these buttons are plastic they're not rubber it feels like they could have been arranged better on this front panel for a more present look and the font feels like it's all over the place the rotary encoder knob doesn't feel particularly nice it does have detents but there is no switch on the knob Overall, this is not a pretty or modern interface by any standards, but it gets the job done. Switching through the different operating modes can be done with the press of the mode button and pressing the set button will allow you to set the corresponding value for the operating mode using the rotary encoder. For example, if you are in constant current mode, you are setting the current. If you are in constant voltage mode, you are setting the voltage and so on. When finished, you have to press the set button again, which returns the interface to the default multimeter slash measurement mode. Turning the load on is done through the on switch. And I've noticed that while the load is on, if you press the set button and start adjusting the value, it's a live adjustment. It doesn't wait for a confirmation to apply that settings. So be careful with that. As you may have noticed, there is a confirmation beep for every press of a button, but that can be disabled from the menu, which is something I'll have to do. I really don't like these sounds. There are secondary modes which you can access with the shift key. They are labeled next to each button and they are well described in the user manual. I haven't seen any calibration menu mentioned in the user manual, but there must be some hidden calibration menu either through the front panel or through the serial interface. Before moving on to testing of this electronic load, let me mention something I've noticed about the input terminals. They're supposed to be 4mm banana sockets, but I've noticed they're a bit wider than that. I'm talking about the internal diameter. When I measure them, it turns out they're actually 4.2mm and I have some pretty good quality banana connectors here who are simply not providing a good connection to the inside of these sockets. And this can lead to contact resistance and when we're talking about 40 amps rated inputs, these can lead to high temperatures which would probably cause the plastic around the connectors to melt. I feel like this is an important issue which people need to be aware of and one possible solution would be to uh, replace these sockets. I do have some similar style connectors which which might work but I'll have to check during the third down to see if uh, these could be easily replaced. As a workaround you could use some spade connectors instead of banana plugs which would ensure a proper connection but unfortunately myself I'm not a big fan of these. Now let's measure the accuracy of the front panel and we're going to start with some voltage measurements with local sensing first with no load. I grabbed a few measurements for 1 volt, 5 volts, 10 volts, 30 volts and 50 volts and they were all within the spec just a couple of counts out when compared to my HP 3458A. I've also tried these measurements while the load was hot after dumping some energy just to see if the temperature would affect the readings on the instrument. And I did observe a slight increase. It is influenced by temperature uh, and the measured errors doubled, for example, from 2 millivolts to 4 millivolts, but it was still within the specified ratings. 
Next, I tried the voltage measurement with the remote sensing option through the BNC connector at the front. The sense wires were attached at the power supply output because if we were testing this power supply with a load, we would care about the voltage at that point. The test was performed while syncing 5 amps. The error was about 4 millivolts and once again we didn't spec. Interestingly, with remote sensing activated, if you remove the BNC connector, it will continue to show measurement using local sensing. It's not throwing any error, so that is a potential trap because you wouldn't know if something is wrong with your remote sensing wires. Next, I checked the ammeter accuracy and for this I compared with measurements from my Fluke 87 because the 3458A can only go up to 3 amps and I wanted to measure higher than that, the Fluke 87 can measure up to 10 amps. So I started with 10 milliamps, then 100 milliamps, 1 amp and 6 amps, which is the maximum my bench power supply can provide. The results were very good with up to 6 milliamps of error for the 6 amp measurement which is within specified ratings. I'm actually impressed by how accurate the front panel measurements on these loads are. Going up to 40 amps would probably increase these errors but it's likely going to stay within the spec. I don't know the exact measurement ranges this instrument has but it probably has a higher range to which the accuracy spec of 0.05% will be calculated to and you're not going to care about a few tens of milliamps when you're measuring 40 amps anyway. Regarding the computer software to connect and control this instrument from a PC, it's based on LabVIEW and I managed to obtain two revisions of the software. One I'm gonna call a light package because it was just 2 megabytes and it was basically just the app and it required me to install the National Instruments LabVIEW runtime engine separately. It needed to be an exact older version 2014 to be more precise. The other revision I obtained was this larger package 156 megabytes which had LabVIEW bundled in the installer. Unfortunately I wasn't able to use either of these on Windows 10, there are too many errors, it can't find some files it needs to run the software and I'm not really sure where the problem lies. Luckily someone wrote a command line app in Visual Studio and I grabbed it from GitHub and it proves that connection can be established with this instrument, I can read the status of the instrument, I can read measured values, I can set new values and turn the load on or off, but the software is just a beta and uh, I think the interface is kind of finicky with timing and there are still errors here and there, but it could be a good starting point for someone looking to improve and build something better. Before wrapping this video with some conclusions, there are a couple of things I would like to check related to safety. Since this is mains powered and has metallic enclosure, I want to see if the earth pin from the IEC connector, the earth connection, is uh, connected to the metal chassis. And it seems the earth is connected to this bottom part of the enclosure but not to the uh, blue part of the enclosure which is also metallic but is heavily painted. Also to the back of the unit this uh, panel is metallic and is not connected to earth either. Even though we have these uh, screws connecting the panels together this uh, blue panel is uh, painted with a thick coat of paint and so the connection doesn't pass through to the, the blue part of the enclosure. We can see this screw is earthed but not the other ones. On the back of the unit I also noticed there are these four screws holding the heatsink in place and since we're probably having n-channel MOSFETs on the heatsink inside this unit those usually have the drain connected to the tab of the package which connects to the heatsink. In a typical electronic load topology the drain of the MOSFETs will be connected to the high side which is the uh, positive input terminal. So I would like to check if there is a connection from the positive terminal to uh, the heatsink and implicitly th those uh, screws on the back. And yes, it appears we do have a connection. There doesn't appear to be a connection with this uh, back plate itself. I've scraped a bit of the paint to, to check and there is no connection. So it, it probably there probably is some mechanism isolating these screws from the uh, uh, back metal plate. But still, uh, that is a uh, potential uh, contact point for uh, a finger. 
uh, that's a potential risk if you use this load with higher voltages because uh, anything you put on the uh, front of the unit on the positive terminal uh, will be uh, present on these screws uh, with respect to earth and you could imagine reaching uh, behind the unit to turn it on or off and touching one of these screws but i'll investigate this further in the teardown video which will follow soon so now let me tell you five things I like about this instrument. First, it measures voltage and current very accurately. It has advanced testing functions. It has RS-232 and RS-485 connectivity. The fan is PWM controlled for reduced fan noise. And best of all, I like the cost of this unit. It beats anything else on the market with the same specs. And here are five things I don't like about this unit. The lack of a proper PC app from the manufacturer. The fact that the uh, input banana jacks are larger than 4mm and so you can't get a good connection with some standard 4mm banana plugs. Adjusting settings while the output is turned on will automatically apply those settings to the output without waiting for any confirmation. Having the positive input from the front panel connected directly to the back metal plate of this unit could potentially be dangerous if you are testing with high voltages. And another annoying thing is that if you remove the remote sense connection from the front panel there is no error triggered so you wouldn't know if there is something wrong with your measurement setup. All things considered I can say this is a good instrument and it is good value for money. I might even go as far as to say that this is the best electronic load that you can buy in this price range right now. So I would appreciate your feedback. Let me know if you agree with what I said in the comments below. I always read and respond to comments. That was all for the review of this unit. The video is already getting too long so I'll have to do the teardown in a separate video but I will link that on screen right here when it's published so all you have to do is uh, click somewhere in this area to watch that video. Thank you for watching, don't forget to check out the links I've placed in the description and I'll see you next time with a new video.